What is up, everybody, and welcome back to episode 7 of our Pro Cyclist Mode, Vladimir Saracen. And we're just about to hit our four rest weeks in a row because our tiredness is up at 69. That might change depending on how much that falls, but right now we're probably going to just skip over these little races that don't mean much and uh, aim for the Okolo Slovenska today. But I think in two days we get to choose our team for next season. I don't know if I should tell you guys or I should keep it a secret. But here at the Memorial Henrika Lasaka we have found ourselves in quite the interesting situation. Martondina and myself are off the front with 10k left. We have 21 seconds over the group of 10 and we have a little ramp coming up which we have tons of stamina for despite the terrible day we're having. So that chasing group is going to be burning a lot of energy to catch us right now. We're going to go ahead and set that up to 92 so once we get right to the bottom of that hill we can go ahead and set our effort and make a quick little attack. Keelik seems like he can keep up with us. We don't want to burn out immediately over the hill and we'll try to stay with him. At 89, we gotta slow it down a little bit so we have just enough to follow Stosh and Grosu. Looks like they just got away from us, unfortunate. And we'll see if we can make our attack here. It looks like it's downhill all the way to the line. Our sprint stat we know is not the best, but a nice little surprise top 10 in a race in Poland. Not too bad. And from that, we do meet our objective for the race. We get 13 more points plus 3 manager satisfaction. And uh, that's not a bad little result for a stopgap in a rest period. But I will see you at the start of the Okolo Slovenska, hopefully. And with just under 12 kilometers to go, we find ourselves in another good situation here. Uh, we are in the breakaway, a minute 30 on the chasing group, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to catch up, so we might look to make a little attack here, and uh, maybe on this second little hill would be the better option, but we have more than enough stamina to stay away, and we'll see if we can create a little bit of separation right here. Smith, I doubt he's going to be able to hold the wheel. That's good. Good, good, good. And we're going to set an effort again and re-attack up the second of the two small hills as we're putting in time to the rest of the break. And hopefully recover a little bit on this down slope. We've got 20 seconds on the trailing group. We've got a little bit of stamina left to make a sprint. 25, 27, doesn't look like they're making significant progress into cutting this lead down, so with about 1.8 kilometers to go, we will launch our sprint, and we're going to take our second win of the season. I don't even know what race this is, as we <laughs> celebrate across the line, Croatia, Slovenia, apparently that's our race. And there we are on the podium once again, accidentally winning races. I was just supposed to get in the breakaway. That was my role for the day, but that break stayed away, and we were by far and away the strongest. And that is actually our third win of the season, the national championships and the Jamaica GP, to go along with Croatia, Slovenia. And we also get the team classification. I think that's the first time this year we've won that category in any race. And with that win comes an exceptional evaluation. Uh, we get 37 progression points and plus 14 percent manager satisfaction and we're about to start getting offers here from other teams so that could prove pretty crucial. 
And stop me if you've heard this one before, but uh, another interesting situation has arisen at the Lillehammer GP. We have a minute 29 on a chasing group of three riders, and we're not going to be caught. I think we're the best place to go ahead and try and win this race, too. We're coming up to the bottom of the last hill. 5k left. We'll pop an energy gel. Move it up to 85. And as soon as we hit this corner, we're going to throw in a little dig and see if anybody can keep up with us. Doesn't look like they can. So we're going to get off the attack a little bit and save some for this little false flat finish. It looks like we're going to be able to go with about 0.8 again. And they're trying to come around. We're going to go ahead and start our sprint a little later, Madsen. Looks like Madsen's going to take it unless we can come around at the end, and we can't. But a good second place finish here at the Lillehammer GP. And I would finally like to welcome you to the real start of the Okolo Slovenska Stage 2. Uh, stage 1 was a prologue, 1.8 kilometers, just set it to 99. I came in 17th. Yeah, looks like I came in 17th. Um, this is the real start of the race. It's going to be a mountain stage. We're probably not going to do too well on it, but our eyes are focused on the hilly stage in stage 3 or 4, I forget which one. And also, in a big piece of news, we have chosen our team for next season. And seeing as this is going to be our next to last episode, I'm not going to spoil the surprise yet, but I will give you a hint by saying we will be racing in Western Europe next season, and it might not be the team you're thinking of. And we do start here on the mountain stage of the Okolo Slovenska, and uh, not expecting much, especially with some of the big hitters that are in this race. We've got Mikko Landa, Garain Thomas, uh, Peter Sagan. He's not a mountains guy, but it's cool to be in a race with him. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you towards the end of this stage. And we have made it to the base of the first climb, where looks like they're starting to ramp up the pressure. Our stamina not in a great place. Ineos has been pushing the pace all day. Fred Wright looks like he's going to try and make a move, but we need to just work our own pace. Don't get caught up in what the better riders are going to be doing. And just try to make it to the line in one piece, but we also don't want to get left behind as a little selection starts to make its way up the road. Simon Clark, Fred Wright, Chris Froome, Martin Dina, Mikalanda, we clearly can't compete with the likes of them for this stage, but we're going to give it a go. We're pretty close with about 5 kilometers left. Only about 27 seconds off of Gary Thomas and Howson up there. And unfortunately, it just doesn't look like we're going to be able to keep up with this group. Our stamina is still in a decent enough spot, though. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. It flattens out a little bit right here. We'll ramp it up, see if we can stay with everybody. There's 3k left. We're going to go ahead and use our energy gel as the favorites start attacking. We can use our sneak. See if we can't make our own little attack towards the end. Maybe with about 1k left. Uh, don't know if we're going to have the stamina to go all the way to the line and we're not. It's going to be uphill. But it looks like Housen's going to take the stage. No, it's Garen Thomas. Damian Housen comes in second. Fred Wright will come across the line in third. Mikko Landa, Magnus Sheffield, Chris Froome, Peter Sagan, Leo Hader. Matt, I mean, look at those names. We really shouldn't have been as hopeful as we were there towards the end. But with that being said, we are not in a bad position for the rest of the tour. We're in 14th place in GC, only 43 seconds behind G. 
with a nice little hilly stage coming up next. And that hilly stage doesn't really look like it's going to favor us too much because our sprint really isn't quite where it needs to be, but we'll give it a go anyway and we should be there come the end of the race. Now, it does say that uh, it wants me to join the breakaway today, but with 20 seconds in the white shirt and only 43 seconds back, I don't think they'll let me get away. I'll try to join once. Whoever attacks around me, I'll try to link up with them, but I don't think I'm going to be getting out of Ineos' sight. And with just over 45 kilometers left to go, we're going to set the pace up this last climb, see if we can get some kind of separation. This might be a fool's errand, but, you know, we have to try to make up time on this stage because the last two stages are flat and we're looks like we're putting the group under a little bit of pressure or about 0.6 from the top we're gonna go ahead and attack try and get over and see if we can recover on the downhill section and in a major shock we were not able to create separation over the top of that hill against this field so we're just going to sit in make sure we stay with the group and uh... I guess try and win a sprint finish against Fred Wright. And with just under 10 kilometers to go, breakaway has 32 seconds. I'm pretty sure we'll reel them in. Their attacks being thrown left and right. We're going to have to move up a little bit. It's, our focus has gone from trying to win the stage into leading out Adam Tupelik, who will be our best shot at a stage victory. But with six kilometers to go, we're going to go ahead and use our gel a little early. Boros can get in front, lead us out. All we got to do is catch Gilbo Van and Danny Martinez. But like I said, our only goal right now is to deliver Adam Tupalik to the line. And I think we're timing this just right. We'll crank it up a little more, go 99, start our sprint. So Adam can come around and start his. Adam Tupelik runs out of stamina just before the line. Hopefully nobody else comes around. But Adam Tupelik does take stage three of the Okolo Slovenska. And hey, not bad. We get a top five as well. Coming in fourth place ahead of Gilbo Van. Sebastian Berwick. <laughs> not really a sprinter, but a great result for Elkov Kasper. And we do see Adam Tupelik on the top step of the podium coming in front of Daniel Martinez, Mikolanda, and myself. And for GC, that moves Tupelik up into ninth, which is great for us. And we arrive to the start of stage four. A few early hills, but nothing too crazy. And we're going to continue that trend from the end of last race where we are going to be leading out Adam Tupelik again. This looks like it fits him down to a T. Now he will have more competition this time. Giacomo Nizzolo, Peter Sagan, Matias Kapetsky, our countrymen, all in the running. But with the form that we've been in, don't count Tupelik out. And with just over 10 kilometers to go, we have caught the break. And unfortunately, I am a co-leader, so I cannot lead out for Tupelik. But Jan Barta will be leading me out. There is a little uphill to this finish, so I'm aiming for a top five. I don't realistically think I can win it. My stamina is not 100% either. As the attacks from the start of this race were incredible. We were going 95 up that first climb. So with eight kilometers left to go, our stamina not quite where we want it to be. We do have the ideal leadout man for us, though. Jan Barta, and with five kilometers left, will take the energy gel and have Jan lead us out. If we can get around this left side, move up to 89, 88, 
something like that. We're not coming around yet. Barta, we've lost his wheel. And with 1.2 kilometers, we'll give it a go, but we're going to be way back. Tupelik, not up there either. Unfortunately, it just wasn't our day. That's going to end any shot we had at a GC win here at Okolo Slovenska. And the fifth and final stage of Okolo Slovenska is dead flat. It's not going to be for us, but hopefully we don't get made co-leader so that we can lead out Adam Tupelik and complete our objective of finishing in the top 10 for this race. And unfortunately we are co-leader again, so no leading out of Tupelik, but it does give us a chance to maybe try and move up a couple spots and get into the top 10 ourselves. And as there's nothing really going on for the first part of this race, I'll see you at the end of the stage. And with 10 kilometers left in the stage, sprint trains are starting to form. We're going to have Zahalka move us up here on this left side. Hopefully we'll sneak through, which isn't the best for being let out, but, you know, he'll, he'll come around eventually. And with 6.9 kilometers left in the stage, I'd say we're in pretty good position. Maybe we can try and get on the wheel of Boivin. No, we can't. Maybe Daniel Oss can try and steal that wheel as so we use our energy gel. That does seem to be the better option. As we get bumped off, eating a little bit of wind, Simon goes. With 2.5 left, we're going to try and make our own moves here. But it looks like we're going to get boxed in unless we move to the right and start our sprint. I mean, we're not at this level at all. We started a little early. Just don't want to lose any time for Adam Tupelik, who is behind us once again. As Erlen Blikra, Giacomo Nizzolo, and Matias Kapetsky round out the podium for the last stage. And for GC, Geraint Thomas wins. Tupelik holds on to ninth place, so we do get our objective. Not much else really going on besides that. I think we finished in the top five. Yes, fifth place for the young rider classification, which is always a nice little feather in the cap. And once again, I wanted to thank you for your support for this series. It does mean the world to me. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and want to see more, because the next episode coming out is going to be the Vuelta a Guatemala Super episode. We're going to try and get through all these stages in one. Um, I know it's not an impressive race or anything, but it looks like there's some fun stages. We should at least be competitive, and it'll be a fun way to end our season. So from me to you, I want to say thank you, and I'll see you later.